Hi, it's Dr. Greg Emerson. The Treat the Cause clinic was shut down, but she lives on with the podcast and the YouTube channel. The great Chinese military philosopher said, if you want to win a war, you have to understand your enemy. So if you want to understand how viruses work, how they infect cells, how we're all going to be exposed, but what we can do to make sure that infection doesn't get established, keep watching because we're going to get started right now. Hi, it's Dr. Greg Emerson. We're going to talk about viruses. First of all, let me tell you how they infect cells. So a virus is a piece of DNA or RNA surrounded by an envelope with a needle attached to it. And they get into the body through skin or mucous membranes and then they get into the bloodstream and they go and attach to the wall of a cell and then they use the hypodermic needle to squeeze in their RNA or DNA into our cells. They have to get into our cells to replicate. Once they're inside the cells, they replicate until there's enough of them inside the cell and then they burst out of the cell, releasing a massive amount of viral particles, which our immune system reacts to. That's called a cytokine storm. So what we're going to do is we're going to look today at how we can utilize the soil, our gut and our immune systems to counteract that strategy. So minerals are in the soil. To get those minerals into our body, we get them in through food. Those minerals are then utilized, let's say by our immune system today, because that's what the talk is about, to support our immune system. So first of all, let's have a look at the importance of soil. Well, that's where growing your own food, knowing your farmer comes into play because we want to take responsibility for the quality of our own food because food only contains minerals if the minerals are in the soil. So if we keep, keep harvesting food from soil, taking minerals out, but not putting them back in, we're not going to be getting the minerals from our food. So a good organic or biodynamic farmer is going to have a plan to remineralize soil. It's like, otherwise it's like going to the bank and removing $100 each time you go to the bank and depositing three, because most commercial fertilizers are NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, but they lack all the other minerals. You can't keep removing all the other minerals and only depositing three back in the soil. So that's why growing your own food, taking responsibility for the soil it grows in, or knowing your farmer through farmer's markets is very important because the quality of the soil is important to ensure the mineral content of the food. Now the minerals which are most important for immune perspective are selenium, iodine and zinc. So why are those minerals important? Well, they're important because the virus that we're under threat by now is a coronavirus. It's the same as the virus which causes the common cold. Social isolation, which we're doing now, is designed to flatten the curve because the people who are going to be most affected by this virus, other than the elderly and the weak, are going to be the first responders, the doctors, the nurses, the paramedics, the police. And if they drop down in availability, we're in some trouble. And if there's a massive spike, very quick spike in cases, our hospitals are not going to be able to cope. There's not going to be enough room in intensive care units or enough ventilators. So the social isolation is not about us not being exposed to the virus. You can't not get exposed to a cold virus during the winter season, but some of us will get affected by that virus and some won't despite all being exposed. So social isolation is about flattening the curve and preserving resources. But the thing to remember is that almost all of us are going to be exposed to this virus and what we should be concentrating on is how do we boost our immune system so not all of us manifest symptoms of the virus. So let's have a look at how the immune system works. Once that virus gets into our body, it's got four roadblocks to get through before it can cause disease. The first roadblock is our immune cells called macrophages. That's uh, Greek or Latin, I can't remember, for big eaters because they're there like Pac-Man to chew up that virus. 
And when that virus is ingested by the macrophage, there is proteins inside it called cathelicidin. And those break down the virus into little pieces. It destroys it. And it does it with a protein cathelicidin. And that cathelicidin is activated by vitamin D, which is why getting out into the sun and you can still do that with social isolation. You go out in the wilderness and you get exposed to the sun to get your vitamin D to make sure the cathelicide and inside your macrophages breaks down that virus particle. When it breaks down that virus particle, it then regurgitates it to the next part of your immune system, which makes antibodies to those viral particles. It is nature's vaccine system. It is your vaccine system. It does exactly what a vaccine does. It takes part of the viral molecule, presents it to your immune system, which then makes antibodies to those viral particles so you won't get, so when you get exposed to the virus next time, your immune system will recognize it and start attacking it straight away. The second roadblock that it comes across is the fort build around, built around our cells. Where does that come from? That comes from vitamin A. So vitamin A builds a fort around each of our cells. It's a protective force field which stops the virus getting to the cell wall. If the virus can't inject itself, inject its DNA or RNA into our cells, it can't get into our cells to replicate. And vitamin A builds that protective force field. Where do we get vitamin A from? Well, liver. So liver's been a traditional food for Homo sapiens. We stopped doing it. Cod liver oil has been a traditional food for indigenous populations for a long period of time. And liver and cod liver oil are rich sources of vitamin A to produce that force field. You can get carotenoids from pigmented foods and the best ones are ruby grapefruit, acai berry, sweet potato, and carrots. But the conversion rate of carotenoids to vitamin A is too slow to be useful enough in this crisis situation. So that's why I'm taking fermented cod liver oil every day to give me the vitamin A to build that force field around my cells. The next thing that happens is that the virus, if it gets through that force field, it's like a burglar trying to get into your house. You have a security system to stop the burglar getting into your house. That's our goal here, is to stop the burglar. Because remember, there have been burglars since the dawn of time. You're never gonna stop being exposed to viruses. When this one's never gonna go, and then the next one's gonna come along. Since the dawn of time, there's been burglars. Since the dawn of time, there have been viruses. I'm sitting here surrounded by about a trillion. I've just been for a swim in the ocean at Byron Bay. There's 200,000 different species of viruses in the ocean water. So I'm surrounded by these burglars. I have to have a strategy to stop them getting into my cell. So the next roadblock is iodine, because what iodine does is iodine stops the virus attaching to receptors on the cell. To be able to get its DNA into our cells, it has to attach to a receptor on the cell and then inject their DNA. Iodine stops the viral particle, the virus, getting onto our receptors on the cell. Selenium then stops the virus being able to inject its DNA or RNA into our cells. So iodine critical. It stops the virus attaching to the receptor. It stops the burglar getting to the door of your house. Selenium then stops the burglar opening the door. The virus has to inject the DNA through the cell wall into our cell to get it inside our cells. Where do we get iodine from? The best source of iodine is seaweed. So kelp is a good supplement or an iodine supplement as long as you don't have a thyroid problem because iodine occasionally can flare up thyroid problems. Where's the best source of selenium? Best source of selenium is Brazil nuts. Four a day is about 200 micrograms of selenium and seafood. So if I want to be really smart, I'll go down the beach today, I'll take some Brazil nuts down, I'll get my vitamin D, I'll eat some seaweed, and I'll catch a fish and eat it, getting some of my selenium from the seaweed, and I'm getting my iodine from the seaweed. But luckily we can go and buy uh, kelp supplements now. So what have we done so far? We have 
flattened the curve. We have had our macrophages chew up the viruses in our bloodstream. Any viruses that slip through that roadblock then get to the cell. But because we're having iodine, they can't attach to the receptor in the cell. And then because we're having selenium, it can't inject its DNA through the cell wall. Now that's where the health of the gut comes in. And that's a really important part of the soil, food, gut paradigm. So we've said the soil has got to have minerals. So our food has minerals. But then we also have to have a healthy gut because many of those minerals, particularly selenium for example, has to be converted in the gut by the microbiome to usable forms of selenium like selenium methionine. So there was just research out today showing that if your microbiome is disturbed, you might, might not make the correct forms of selenium for our body to use. So let's go back, let's make sure our, so we know about the health of our soil, let's know we therefore get good healthy food full of minerals and let's keep our gut healthy so those minerals can be properly utilized by the body. And then of course the last thing is, the last roadblock is if the virus does get through the macrophages, does get to the receptors, does get itself injected, it then replicates but then it's got to burst out through the cell to start spreading itself to other cells. And what so happens to stop the virus bursting out through the cell? iodine again. So now we've got, let's get some vitamin D from the sun. Let's get some vitamin A from cod liver oil. Let's get some selenium from Brazil nuts and seafood. Let's get some iodine from kelp. And then we're going to have four roadblocks, which even though we get exposed to the virus, our chance of it overwhelming our defense systems are drastically reduced. So that's why we're looking at doing social isolation to flatten that curve, to protect our first responders, protect our doctors, our police, our nurses, to protect the most vulnerable, the elderly, the sick, the infirm. And then the rest of us, what we can do while we're encouraging that social isolation to flatten the curve is to keep ourselves strong, to keep those four roadblocks in place. So once again, to summary, because this is so critical, this is so critical, this will save us, is the sun for vitamin D, the cod liver oil for vitamin A, the iodine or kelp for iodine, and the Brazil nuts or seafood for the selenium, four roadblocks, which will be the difference between you being exposed to a virus, being exposed to the cold virus on a bus, but not getting a cold, or being exposed to a cold virus on a bus and coming down with a bad cold. This coronavirus, no doubt, is a different sort of virus. It's much more virulent and causing much more respiratory problems than obviously a cold virus or influenza. And the other big problem with this virus is that even if you do recover, the data is now showing you might be left off with lung damage, scar tissue of the lungs, which is gonna affect your respiratory capacity for the rest of your life. So this is why those five steps now, let's go five steps, let's go social, social isolation. I'm doing it in the wilderness. I'm doing it on the beach. I'm doing it by waterfalls. You don't have to sit in your room at home breathing stale air. And if you are gonna sit in a room at home breathing stale air, get a diffuser on with some essential oils will help, which will help reduce any viral burden in the room. So uh, let's, stay, let's do social isolation in the wilderness. Let's do sunlight. Let's do Brazil nuts. Let's do kelp and iodine. Five roadblocks to really help us minimize to understand our enemy, to stop, think, orientate, plan, take action, so this virus doesn't start to destroy society as we know. And in fact, the first, next podcast I'm doing after this talk is I'm talking to some guys up at The Harvest, a great cafe in Newry Bar in northern New South Wales about how they see us potentially learning the lessons from this virus to revolutionize how we, what we eat and how we eat it. So we're talking to those guys uh, after I've finished this one. So thanks very much for watching. If you like it, this is critical information. You're not seeing much in the news and the media about this. There's a lot of panic out there. This is how we can take control. This is how we can change fear to courage so that we have a strategy. Fear comes when you don't have a strategy to deal with a crisis. I've been through that several times. I know the best thing to counter fear 
is to have a plan, a clear plan and action to counteract the threat that we're under. So let's concentrate on courage through knowledge rather than fear. And coming up next is how we're going to use the knowledge that we've got from this crisis to come out with a better system about staying healthy as a species, understanding the best of traditional knowledge with new science to revolutionize the health and the food quality that we're getting as a species. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, make sure you share it. Make sure you like and subscribe. If you'd like to support more of my work, there's my Patreon page that you can join up where you get individualized information and videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.